an interactive PDF can be used to create what appears to be a website. One note of caution, an interactive PDF and a website that was actually coded will behave very differently from each other. There are certain expectations that you're going to have to understand before going into it. And we'll take a look at how the end result looks in different browsers to prove that in a bit. It's really important to understand when you're creating something that's interactive, you have to think like a user experience designer. And to get the PDF to actually behave like a traditional website, a coded website would, you kind of have to do some tricks. So here you can see I have my home page. I'm going to bring up my pages panel. And you can see that this interactive PDF is actually 20 pages long. So even though I have interactive elements here, these buttons and there's a hyperlink that we're going to set up, what it's doing is actually linking to different pages in the PDF. So if this were to be brought up on a website, let me actually just bring up Safari for a second. Here is the PDF that I exported and then uploaded through my web host, which is bluehost.com. This is published on the web, and if you go to this URL, www.josephcaserto.com slash I-N-T-E-R for interactive PDF, ID for InDesign, dot PDF. So josephcaserto.com slash interpdf ID dot PDF. That will bring up this interactive PDF. As I roll over the buttons, there's my rollover state. If I click the button, there's my click state that I set up, and it will bring me to the pages that I have bookmarked. Okay, so each of these links is set up with a bookmark that I created in the bookmarks panel. Let's switch browsers, Firefox, and let me just hide all of my others. Firefox does not really like this format very much. It even shows me up at the top this PDF document might not be displayed correctly. When I click the links, notice that they're not going to the right destinations. And that's one of the reasons I put this disclaimer up here at the top. This is an interactive PDF made with Adobe InDesign. For best results, download it and view with Adobe Acrobat. And then if you don't have it, there's a hyperlink that when you click it will bring you to the Adobe site to download the free reader. If I go to a different browser, let's say Google Chrome, and again, let me hide everything else. So if I go to my Chrome menu here on the Mac and I drag down to hide others, everything but Chrome is going to go away. Here in Chrome, the links work, but take a look at my buttons. I've got this little halo around them. And that's kind of how Chrome handles interactive buttons. Let's go back to text one here, and you can see if you look closely, let's even zoom in on this a little bit, that around my triangle, there's a little halo, uh, kind of a square. So my point here is that there are certain things that you're just not going to be able to control. Part of the reason is because this format was developed by Adobe, really it was developed to ideally be viewed in Acrobat or by Acrobat Reader, Adobe products. So as with a coded website, there are certain limitations or differences within browsers that are going to affect the finished result that you as a coder or designer, in this case, will not know. So you'll either have to decide to exclude a certain component of your audience or you're going to have to aim for the lowest common denominator and design for that. So everybody gets a good experience. Working within these certain constraints will challenge you to create a better solution many times.